again everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are going to be taking a look at the newly released Got Friends Mini 500. The Mini 500 represents Got Friends first foray into the helicopter market for Microsoft Flight Simulator. The Got Friends team was kind enough to reach out to the channel asking whether or not I would like to make a review video of the aircraft. Having very much enjoyed the rest of their output thus far I was very keen to do so and hopefully you'll enjoy our flight in the aircraft here today. This particular video is going to be a review flight as opposed to a full review, so we'll be reviewing the product on the fly as it were. Nevertheless, as always though, I'll try my best to give you a good feel for what the product has to offer. We'll cover off everything as we go. I've got a fun little flight hopefully lined up for us here as well. As you may have already noticed, we are currently on the ground in Rio de Janeiro. We're going to be using the Mini 500 to take in the scenery, so we'll be making our way around the city, taking in some of the major sites, for example Sugarloaf Mountain and of course Christ the Redeemer. So I do hope you enjoy the video, as always if you do please consider giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel. So here we are now then in the cockpit of the Got Friends Mini 500 helicopter. Again not necessarily the best day for flying here, rather cloudy over Rio, but we should get some really nice views of the city and the surrounding scenery nevertheless. And I have to say really nice as well to be back in another Got Friends product, I've really rather enjoyed all of their output thus far. Anyway running through our pre-flight checks we'll firstly close up the door. For the magnetic compass, that's actually an optional addition. We'll take it off for today just to increase our visibility a little bit. We're not going to need it. Tablet we'll leave open, but again, not necessarily going to be using that for the flight. Battery master can go on. Alternator is set on. And again, it's a little bit gloomy outside, so we'll get the uh, dome light on here as well. As well as the instrument dash lights. Beacon light can go on, same for the nav lights. Tablet power, again, we can just leave that off for now. For the MGL top display, we'll leave that on the engine monitoring page. For the bottom display, we'll come on to temperature monitoring. Altimeter is set. Nav and comp brightness. We'll leave the transponder off for now, and we'll leave the nav radio off for now as well until we've completed the start. Avionics suite, again, that can actually be cycled. You can choose to have a uh, GNS unit there as well, but we'll go with the standard avionics setup today, just with the comm radio and the transponder. Dash lights are set as required. We'll leave the doors installed, but again, those can actually be toggled on or off via the doors switch, as you can see. So as usual with Got Friends products, lots of nice little features there. Anyway, just checking the rotor area, making sure everything's clear. And it is as best we can see. So for the start itself, the fuel valve will set to open and guard that up. Fuel pump can go on. Fuel quantity is verified. We have uh, half 50% fuel capacity on board today. Rotor brake is off, disengaged. It seems as well as though the aircraft has some degree of persistent state saving since it uh, held some of the settings I had from the last flight, I believe. Anyway, rotor brake is set. Lights are set. Starting the engine again, the area is clear. And to engage the starter, we can just hit the switch here on the cyclic. Okay, so we do have a good start. You'll have noticed there as well. Very nice start animation, sounds as well. An excellent sound package, I think, on the aircraft. Anyway, we are good, so we'll run through the before takeoff checks. Navigation lights are set. The landing lights can come on as well. Trims are set to neutral. The headphones, we do have a nice option. We can add or remove headphones, which, as you can hear, does dull out the rotor and the engine noise, but we'll leave those off for the flight today just so you can hear the sound pack a little bit better. Fuel pump can go off. Get the comm radio on, although we're not going to need it. Transponder can go to out. 
we'll get the tablet on here as well. It's pretty basic, just what you get with any default aircraft. So we have a map option as well as 3D vision. We'll go with the map option for now. The MGL top display will go to landing deviation. That's set. And for the bottom display, we'll go to turbine load. And set. There we are, good to go. We'll gently start feeding in the collective. I have to say that the Mini 500, one of the best helicopters I've flown in the sim in terms of its takeoff and handling characteristics. Much more predictable than most, quite easy to get a decent takeoff out of the helicopter. And I find as well that the physics are a lot more plausible in terms of lift off and touchdown. Feels like you get a little bit more ground effect, there's a more gradual transition as you lift off and come over the pad. So just continuing to feed in that collective, got a little bit of left anti-torque pedal as well. Coming slightly back on the stick. And you can see lifting off pretty gently there, just a little bit of shimmying on the skids. But again, much better than many of the other helicopters I've tried in the sim, certainly better than the other default options I've flown. So we'll just continue to track out to the north momentarily. We'll break off to the east in just a moment. As I say, we're just going to do a quick lap here around Rio. Not ideal weather for sightseeing, but nevertheless, pretty spectacular scenery. We should hopefully get some decent views as we make our way around. Coming into some transitional lift, so we can actually start easing back off the collective slightly. We've got the Rio CBD just off the nose, just out to our one o'clock as well, we've got the uh, Santos de Mont airport. So we'll just head for the city for now and we'll uh, break off out towards the south, heading out towards uh, Sugarloaf Mountain in just a moment's time. But certainly the Mini 500, a very pleasant helicopter to fly in the sim, pretty stable overall as well once you've got it into the cruise, it's nice. We'll talk more about the handling characteristics, of course, as we go. And currently as well, just trimming out some of the control forces. You can trim in the helicopter, which seems to be the case with every helicopter I've flown in Microsoft Flight Simulator to date. Not necessarily realistic, but I do think that's a really nice concession, since most of us, of course, are not using optimal hardware for these sorts of aircraft. So, just approaching the city, there's the airport, just passing through the nose. A little bit of a marina down there as well. As I say, we'll track southbound now. We'll do a bit of a fly past of Sugarloaf Mountain. If anyone knows why it's called Sugarloaf Mountain, I'd certainly be interested to know. Even at pretty modest power settings as well, you can crack along quite nicely in the Mini 500. We've got about 30% on the collective currently. And already picking up around 90 knots in terms of airspeed. So you really can uh, cruise along quite nicely, quite high speed if you want in the aircraft. But of course the advantage as well of rotary aircraft and the sim, if you do want to take things nice and slow, you can do so as well. You'll notice we are flying slightly out of balance currently, or at least we appear to be. Again, we'll discuss that in just a moment's time once we've made our way past the mountain. I believe the uh, little inlet, the bay there, with the beach off on our right is uh, Botafogo. And my apologies in advance, I'm sure we're going to butcher some of the name pronunciations as we go. It's usually the case. Anyway, Sugarloaf Mountain off the nose. As I say, we'll just make a fly past that. A bit of a descent here now, so of course picking up some speed. We'll aim to keep the aircraft below 130 knots for now, that's V&E. So far I haven't seen or been able to induce anything like uh, vortex ring state or retreating blade to stall, but we'll try and do so again later on, we'll try and put the aircraft through V&E, which again is 130 knots. So it's coming around the top of the mountain, we'll head out now towards Copacabana Beach, pretty famous of course. And there are some really beautiful beaches, it has to be said, in the area. There's Christ Redeemer, you might just about be able to make out that off to our 2 o'clock, we'll be heading back there later on. 
So we're really feeling that collective now. We'll come up to around 70%. And we'll just trim for level flight again, pick up some speed, show you what a speedy little helicopter the Mini 500 can be. And we've got uh, Copacabana out towards the west. Again, not a particularly brilliant day for the beach. But again, the uh, aircraft very smooth on the controls. Once you've got it trimmed out, very stable as well, so pretty easy to fly, but it feels still quite convincing. It does have a feeling of weight to it, and it doesn't feel quite as artificial as a lot of the uh, the helicopters in the sim. Feels a lot more fluid, I would say. But again, you'll notice we're flying out of balance currently. That does seem to be an issue with a couple of the default helicopters I've flown. Even if we feed in full left anti torque there to correct the situation. So there's full left now on my pedals. You can see we're still slightly out of balance. And actually now it feels like we're visually more out of balance than we were before. I don't know whether that's just a general issue in the sim. Again, I have seen the same behaviour with a couple of the uh, the default helicopters. I think the Bell 407 from memory was uh, the same issue. You can see we're doing about 90 knots. We can get 100 out of the aircraft pretty easily if we want to. They're tracking northwest now up the, uh, the coast, coming up over Ipanema. Again, probably a name many of you will be familiar with. Apparently the hills off the nose are quite a popular spot for hang gliding. Something I've always wanted to try but never have as yet. Anyway, we'll start gaining some altitude here, heading out towards Christ the Redeemer. We're going to do a couple of laps around there. Check out the statue. So just feeding in that collective a little bit more. As with every Got Friends product that I've tried personally, very much enjoying the Mini 500 so far. It's another very nice effort from the team, and again, very reasonably priced. Great fun in the sim. Something good fun about small helicopters. I tend to find they're a bit more enjoyable to fly than the larger ones. It could just be me though. But a racetrack down off the nose, looks like a horse racing track most likely. Can't see the name of that here on our chart, or on our tourist map, which is what I'm currently using today. Even though the weather isn't that nice, it does have to be said, the sim is looking pretty spectacular under these conditions. Quite a moody sort of atmosphere, the lighting looking really great. So Christ the Redeemer just off the nose, we'll make our way inbound, doing about 700 feet per minute here in the climb, back down to around 70 knots. One thing I have noticed, keep an eye on it as we make our approach into the hover here, but as we come back on the collective, particularly even in a shallow descent, quite often the rotor RPM and the engine RPM will actually come up through the red line. I don't think that's my flying technique, it could be, but I've yet to have similar behaviour in other simulated rotary aircraft that I've flown in other sims. I wonder if it's not a function of the aircraft not currently having a uh, modelled governor, and that's basically down to a limitation of the sim currently. Uh, for example, the clutch and the governor are not modelled because they're not modelled by default in the sim. And again, the Got Friends Mini 500 does make use of the uh, default helicopter aerodynamics, so there's nothing uh, custom, no external flight model. But as I say, still for me, one of the uh, the more convincing helicopter flight models that I've come across in the sim thus far. So you can see now we are back on the collective, but we're actually climbing at the moment and losing some airspeed, so I wouldn't really be expecting, I don't think, to see the, uh, the rotor RPM coming up there Currently in the yellow band, same for the engine RPM. I wonder if that's not a little bit of a bug, but I'm sure someone with a bit more rotary experience will let me know. You'll notice though, again, just keep an eye on things, but later on, as we come back up on the uh, collective, feed in some engine power again, that will tend to sort the situation out. 
the game we've got Sugarloaf Mountain off the nose. And Christ Redeemer just down at our 10 o'clock. We'll come into the hover here, we'll just make a bit of an orbit around the monument. And you can see the landing pad there as well, just off the nose. You might just about be able to make that out. So we'll just do a couple of rotations here around the monument and then we'll make our way back towards the pad. Well, in fact, just before we make our way back towards the pad, we better carry out a couple of manoeuvres, again, just to demonstrate the uh, lack of ability, at least I've found, to induce retreating blade stall. And the same with Vortex Ring State. I've tried to put the aircraft into a couple of situations which I would have thought would induce it, but so far I had no luck. So currently I'm right back on the collective, and you can see we're pretty much straight and level, just starting to lose altitude now. So I think there's something slightly odd with the engine there currently. But notice here, as I start to feed in that collective again, you'll notice a change in engine note and you'll see that the parameters come back more towards normal. I will say I really like the uh, sounds on the aircraft. I think both the engine noise and the rotor noise are excellent. You'll notice as well there's a, a change in engine note as we come up on the collective and start demanding more again from the turbine. The aircraft also pretty easy to put into the hover here. Controls very nicely. Again, I've got it trimmed out, but I can just make small inputs on the controls. It's pretty stable. Basically does exactly what you'd expect it to do, which makes it a real pleasure to fly. It may well be that it's more stable than the uh, the real-life Mini 500. I imagine a helicopter of this size would be quite demanding to fly. But nevertheless, great fun. And certainly, without doubt, one of my favourite helicopters in the sim thus far. Okay, so now we've fed in some collective again. You can hear that change in both rotor RPM and engine note, and things feeling much more normal now in terms of engine control. So I'm not quite sure what's causing that spike there in the RPMs. But again, if I had to hazard a guess, it's probably down to the lack of governor modeling currently in the sim. Just awesome scenery, the sim looking excellent and a really fun little flight so far. So we'll just swing ourselves again face on with the statue and then we'll hover there momentarily just to see how we go with the hover. And then, as we've already discussed, we can break off back out towards the south. We'll try and pick up some speed. So, back up on the collective. Just trying to maintain straight level. A little bit of left anti torque here, just to get the nose around. But again, very nice to fly, very controllable. By no means the best rotary sim pilot on the planet, but I'm finding so far I can pretty much get the Mini 500 to do exactly what I want. That being said, again, it doesn't feel overly easy to fly. It doesn't feel artificially easy to fly. It just feels pleasant and responsive on the controls, predictable. Anyway, we'll test out the hover again, obviously, when we come back to the landing. We'll break off out to the south again for now, pick up some speed. Try and put the aircraft through VNE and induce that uh, retreating blade still, but as I say, I've yet to manage to do so. So back up on the collective, trimming forwards. So pretty much fully up on the collective at this point. You can see speed building there up through 100 knots. Fully trimmed forward now. And I've got full forward on the stick there. You can see we can get the helicopter up to around 115 knots there. And actually then losing control authority. So actually not able to get the aircraft through 130. I don't know whether, again, that's true to life for the handling characteristics. But certainly I haven't really managed to get the speed up above V&E anyway. It doesn't feel as though there's any onset towards retreating blades still. And it would make sense, again, given that the aircraft uses the default 
some aerodynamics and I haven't seen much behaviour like that from the uh, the Bell 407 or the Cabri that uh, we're not going to see the same here with the Got Friends Mini 500. And likewise, again with uh, Vortex Ring State, I've tried to put the aircraft into situations where I would expect to see that induced and I've had no joy so far. So once again, heading inbound towards Christ Redeemer, we've got the uh, second hill there out towards the east. It's our landing area, so we'll head back over, we'll put the aircraft down on the pad, and as usual we'll just finish up the review discussing a few points on what I think of the product. Doesn't feel like there's too much wind around, but we'll aim to land back in the direction in which we departed. So pretty much making a straight approach here. Back onto the pad. And again, just a few clicks of trim. Seems to centre everything up quite nicely. And I find that makes flying these sorts of aircraft with uh, this sort of hardware. I'm using a Thrustmaster OTAS Warthog. It's obviously a spring-centred joystick here. And it would be a real pain to just have to keep constantly putting input onto the controls. So again, we'll just kill off the speed. Keeping the descent for now, we're a little bit high in terms of our profile. And just starting to feed in the collective again. Needing a little bit of right anti torque as well. So, again, we're going to land in the direction we came from, so heading back towards the city, facing out towards the north. Hopefully it's coming across in the video, but the aircraft definitely, again, just more responsive, smoother on the controls, more predictable, very easy to place it where you want. So I find with the default helicopters, and indeed some of the payware helicopters that we looked at, it can be really tricky getting the aircraft over the pad. You tend to get a bit of a shear as well, and the aircraft lifts up again. There's really no transition between being airborne and being on the ground. Doesn't seem to be much ground effect either in a lot of the helicopters in the sim, whereas it really feels like you have some here. And once again, now we've come back up on the uh, collective, those engine parameters returning back to normal. So I'll try and get a nice landing here out of the uh, the Mini 500 to demonstrate my point about the aircraft being pretty easy to smoothly land on a dime. We can use the landing deviation reference there if we want to, but we'll just make a uh, visual reference here for our touchdown. Off the collective. And we're down. Not a bad landing overall, again, just a really enjoyable, nice little helicopter to fly. Running through the offline checks, landing light can come off. We'll get the comm radio off. And same for the transponder and the tablet. To kill the engine, we'll just cut the fuel. And waiting for the engine to run down. You can see there, both the rotor RPM and the engine RPM are falling. We do have a rotor brake, but we'll just wait a moment there to activate that. 
the tablet power is off. The lights, we'll get the dome light off. We'll leave the beacon on here until the engine's stopped. We can get the gauge lights off there as well. Alternator is off. We'll open up the door. And the rotor is slowly spooling down there, but we'll pull the rotor brake. And of course that's slowing down the rotor much more quickly. So beacon can come off, and lastly the battery. And we do have a good shutdown and a great little flight in the Mini 500. So there you go ladies and gents, I do hope you enjoyed our outing in the Got Friends Mini 500. I've probably made my feelings pretty clear already, but I certainly enjoyed the flight. I think the Mini 500 is another great product from Got Friends. As usual, we'll take a few minutes here to discuss what I think are the strengths and weaknesses of the add-on, starting with the negatives, working our way through to the positives. Always worth mentioning though, before we get stuck in, given that I've never actually flown a rotary aircraft myself, a lot of the points I make here will be conjecture on my part, educated guesses. In terms of the product's negatives, I have to say I didn't find anything too significant there really. Overall, I was very impressed with the quality of the add-on once again. We did talk about the rotor and the engine overspeed there at certain points during the flight. That to me seems slightly strange in terms of behaviour, but I can't 100% say whether or not that's correct, whether it's accurate. I suspect not, it did certainly feel a little bit strange to me, but once again I would primarily put that down to the fact that the sim doesn't currently model governors. There are also other aspects of rotary aircraft flight modelling still not available currently in the sim. So for example you may have noticed that the clutch on the helicopter currently in Optive. Most of this functionality should be coming with Sim Update 12 though, and the Got Friends team have already said that they plan to continue to develop the Mini 500, adding the features as they become available. So no major concerns there from me on that front. I'm sure the behaviour will get fixed up as and when it's possible, if not now then with Sim Update 12. A few other minor issues with the product, just things that need cleaning up. I did notice there was a few discrepancies between the in-sim checklist and the checklist in the manual. The sim checklist seemed to be slightly incomplete, there was just one or two items missing, but certainly the manual seems to have a comprehensive set of checklists, so I would recommend using that for the time being. Whilst the sound set overall is excellent, I did also notice a little bit of flanging on the sounds at times, particularly when the helicopter was heading away from my viewpoint. So again, maybe just another little area that could use cleaning up there. According to the manual, I noticed as well that the user should be able to remove the pilot model via the master battery switch, that didn't seem to be working for me. That may have been something I was doing in error, it may be a current bug with the product. Again, not a huge issue of course, but it is a feature I like to see. The onboard tablet was also fairly simplistic of course, just using the default sim functionality at the moment. And I believe again GotFriends have said they will add to that functionality over time. Although there were a couple of really nice features still on the aircraft, for example the headphones, the ability to add and remove the whiskey compass, change out the avionics. It did feel like there were perhaps just one or two features less than we've seen typically on other GotFriends products. Again, by no means a major issue, but for example, on the Got Friends Discus, it's possible to see the pilot internally as an option. It would be nice to have that as well with the Mini 500. But once more, the Got Friends team do plan to continue to develop the product, so hopefully we'll see some of these features going forward. Certainly, their Vilga got some pretty significant updates after release, and I'm sure we'll see the same here. It'd be great as well, for example, to have failure modelling, systems wear and tear, things of that nature. That's about it in terms of my negatives though, and many of those really just suggestions for improvements to the product as opposed to actual failings with the add-on. Once again, overall I think the Mini 500 is a very well made, very high quality product offering some really nice features at a very reasonable price. Touching on the FPS to start, I was seeing about 64 FPS in the Mini 500 versus around 73 in the default Cessna 152, so losing around 9 frames there which is pretty typical with third party add-on. In terms of the modelling and texturing, not much I can really fault there, I thought the aircraft looked excellent both internally and externally. Really nice visual effects as well, for example we saw heat blur from the engine, some smoke effects as well, you can kick up dust with the rotors. The rotor disc and the tail rotor itself also animated quite nicely, there were a couple of RPM ranges where it looked a little bit less refined, but again overall I thought a very nice job was done there. In terms of the systems modelling, again I think a very decent job, really the only limitations there with the systems are dictated by the sim currently. So once again, no working governor currently, the same goes with the clutch. And overall the engine behaviour felt decent, but I do think it could be refined further. We've already spoken a little bit about the strange RPM behaviours. It would be nice as well though to see hot starts, engine damage, over torque, things of that nature. All in all though, the systems modelling felt pretty comprehensive to me. It was nice as well to see the custom avionics there with the MGL screens. In terms of the aircraft's flight model, again, always a little bit tricky for me here to offer up an accurate opinion, but I thought it felt pretty convincing overall. 
Despite using the Sims default rotary flight modeling currently, I felt that the Mini 500 held up pretty well. We're still not looking at something that's going to rival the likes of DCS or X-Plane in terms of the rotary flight modeling, but certainly the flight model seems to be trending in a very nice direction, and once again for me, I think the Mini 500, one of the more convincing feeling flight models in terms of the takeoff and the landing. It's really the only helicopter I've come across in the sim so far where you can quite accurately control it during the takeoff and the landing. It feels much more as though you're able to ease on or off the skids, really transitioning from being on the ground into flight. Previously, I've tended to find that Microsoft Flight Simulator helicopters do one or the other, there's no real transition in between. Once in the cruise, the Mini 500, a very pleasant aircraft to fly, as I mentioned, very stable, easy to trim out, nice and speedy as well. And again, as we've already discussed during the flight, it seems to me as though the more complex areas of the flight model are left wanting. So for example, didn't really come across any retreating blade stall, vortex ring state. Given that I haven't seen much of that behaviour with the default helicopters though, that makes sense. And once again, I would imagine that Got Friends will continue to refine things with the advent of Sim Update 12. Certainly, in terms of liveries, there are plenty to choose from. There's a couple of nice custom options as well in terms of the airframe. There's a stealth livery which offers up a US Navy paint scheme. It has rotor tip lights, head tracking HUD and mounted mini guns. There's also a hunter livery which comes with a camouflage paint scheme and is equipped with a compound bow. Very important to note though, as always, both of those options only available if bought outside of the in-sim marketplace. You won't have any weapons, of course, if you do purchase in the sim directly. Obviously, we didn't get a chance to look at either of those options today, but we'll perhaps do so in a later video. Anyway, in summary, once again, I think the Mini 500 is another cracking product from the Got Friends team. The aircraft is brilliant fun to fly, very versatile as well. You really can throw it around, but equally very pleasant in the cruise. You can once again also get up a pretty nice cruise speed, so you're able to get from A to B in a pretty timely fashion. System steps is good, should be improved upon going forwards, and the same I think again for the flight model. At this point, I'm sure that most of you will have come across a Got Friends product in one form or another, and certainly the Mini 500 very much delivering to their usual standards. Once again, in this particular case, Got Friends were kind enough to reach out to me with a free copy of the product, but certainly had I paid for it myself, I'd be very happy with my purchase. Thank you once again to Got Friends for letting us take a look at the Mini 500 here today, and thank you very much to all of you for watching. Once again, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please consider giving it a like. If you want to see more content from the channel, then please consider subscribing as well. Lastly, as ever, a very big thank you to my channel members and patrons for all of your support. I do hope that all of you are having a great day wherever you are. Take really good care, and I will see you all again soon.